When you're watching curling during the Olympics in South Korea, you may think that curling is an easy sport. It's actually a pretty complicated set of factors at play that work to make curling the thrilling event that it is. As the stones move across the ice, they exert a downwards force, which melts the ice a little. This creates a little pocket of water between the stone and the ice, along which the stone can glide. How the friction makes the stone curve, though, is what is up for debate. Instead of curving in the opposite direction of the stone's rotation like you'd expect, the curling stone moves with it. This means the stone spinning clockwise will bend to the right when viewed from above. There are two leading theories as to how this happens. One group in Sweden proposes that the front end of a spinning stone creates scratching in the ice, which the trailing end of the stone will try to follow. A different group in Canada proposes that the additional downward force on the front end of the stone causes melting, and the water created is pulled with the rotation of the stone, leading to the stone traveling in the direction of the rotation. It's really interesting to watch a sport where the competitors control the path of objects to centimeter level precision, while scientists don't actually have an understanding of how the motion of those objects works. 